probably would uh, offer them a lot more. Pro this is all probably. Not she might want to do a mm. second year. Mm. So uh, we'll try to ask Oberlin. Oberlin won't give you any. But when were you in, uh, uh, let's see, I was in Oberlin and saw you in the 30s. And you asked a question. When were you? You were at Sith. You went to Oberlin. Oh, yeah, from 1950 to 51. 50 to 51, and I was mm -hmm. long gone. You, gra you graduated in? I graduated in 1939. 1939. Yeah, mm -hmm. and John in 1937. You went <laughs> to Oberlin, too? Yeah. That's, That's where far. you met. That's where we met. That's where she caught me. <laughs> I caught him in art class. <laughs> oh, really? You were yeah. both in an art class? Yeah. Yes, and I nailed him there. <laughs> You were, you were, were you doing cementing things? No, we were watercoloring, as I remember. It was design class. Was it design? Ms. Oh. Shoffler's All right. design class. I don't know if you had designs on me or I had them on you, but anyway, it's worked. Oh, that's uh, well, I was hoping our grandson would follow our footsteps because all of his parents and grandparents went to Oberlin. Really? Your children all went to Oberlin? Your two My daughters? Oldest. Your oldest girl? Yes. My younger is something else again. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Brother Records. Sloman Belding and I'm Edward Rosewater's great granddaughter. And I am Edward Rosewater File, a great grandson of Edward Rosewater. And here we have a wonderful collection, albums of photographs dating way back to the uh, early uh, mid 1800s and all showing the history of the Rosewater family. And I think we'll have Dorothy explain who the people are, and we will see the pictures in the album. This is Herman and Roselia Rosenwasser. He was born in 1807 in Bohemia in a village near Prague, and she was born in 1815 in Bohemia. She was his second wife. He was first married to her sister, Julia, who was the mother of his first daughter, Elizabeth. And they were reared in Libna, near Prague, emigrated to Cleveland in 1854, and lived at 46 Belmont Street. Edward Rosewater's wife was Leah Coleman, and these are her parents, Ella and Loeb Coleman, and I do not have any record of where they were born or when. This is the house in Bukovan, Bohemia, where Edward Rosewater and most of his brothers and sisters were born. This was the property of the Coleman family uh, at 3rd and Prospect Street, uh, Cleveland, where they had a dry goods store. Edward Rosewater became a telegrapher at a young age, and he went to Washington during the Civil War. He sent the Emancipation Proclamation out over the wire with President Lincoln standing at his elbow. This envelope was addressed to Edward Rosewater in Omaha when uh, Nebraska was still a territory before it had been accepted as a state. This is a letter from Marcus to Edward, his brother. Marcus was a doctor who went on to be a professor of OBGYN at Ohio Wesleyan. He was the third son of Herman and Rosalia. He attended Old Central High School in Cleveland. At the time of his graduation in 1864, the Civil War was at its peak, and he wanted to join the Army. Uh, he tried to get an appointment to West Point, but his father vetoed it and said, get an education and make something of yourself. So he went abroad for study. 
decided upon medicine and spent three years at Prague where he specialized in surgery. And he returned to Cleveland and at once entered practice. Okay. Edward Rosewater married Leah Coleman in 1864 in Cleveland. This is the main street of Omaha, Farnham Street, looking west in the early 1870s. Another view of Farnham Street in Omaha, looking west in the early 1870s. With Stella Rosewater, the eldest child of Edward and Leah Coleman Rosewater. The picture was taken on her second birthday, August 16th. 1868. She died in 1946. This is Victor Rosewater, the next child and eldest son of Edward and Leah. He was born in 1870 and died in 1940. This is a letter from Leah Rosewater to one of her sisters and the sister's husband in 1873. It was written on the stationery of the Omaha Daily Bee, which was founded by Edward Rosewater. This is Charles Coleman Rosewater, born in 1874 and died in 1946. This is Blanche Rosewater, the youngest of the Rosewater children. She was born in 1881 and died in 1972. This may be a picture of A. Jankow, who wrote the accompanying letter on the stationery of A. Jankow, Watches and Jewelry, Cleveland, Ohio, August 25th, 1882. Dear brother-in-law, in answer of yours as of 23rd inst, as to the terms in regards of Stella and little Nellie, would be six dollar per month for each little miss. As far as the accommodations is, it don't make any difference, and Nanny says it is no inconvenience to her. We keep girl anyway, and we got room enough, and we know Stella don't make any trouble. Nanny sends her regards. I remain yours respectfully, A. Jankow. P.S. Can Nellie eat sauerkraut? The house at 17th and Farnham Streets, Omaha where Edward and Leah lived for 19 years and all their children were born. Victor on the grass, St uh, Charlie and friend Ida Punt standing, Stella holding Blanche, Nellie and Leah standing. Edward's sons, Charles and Victor Rosewater. This is a tin type of Leah Rosewater with three of her friends. Mrs. Harney, Mrs. Kennard, and Mrs. Kimball. Edward and Leah Rosewater's three daughters, Blanche Rosewater Newman, Stella Rosewater File, Nellie Rosewater Elgutter. Leah Coleman Rosewater, her mother and sisters, Sadie, Nanny, Molly, and Betty Standing, Belle, Grandma Coleman, whose name was Ella, Leah, and Clara, seated. Edward Rosewater with his sons, Charles and Victor. Leah Rosewater with her two daughters, Blanche and Stella. Missing from the picture is Nellie Rosewater Elgutter, who died in 1893. the Omaha Daily Bee Building at 912 Farnham Street, which was decorated for General Grant's visit in 1877. Grant's picture in the front of the building later hung in Rosewater's house at 1711 Douglas Street. The bee moved to the building below in 1889.
house at 1711 Douglas Street, Omaha, where Edward and Leah lived from late 1886 or early 1887 until Edward's death in 1906. Left to right, Victor, Stella with Blanche, Leah. This is an interior shot of 1711 Douglas Street, Omaha, showing the fireplace fender, which has been inherited by Edward's great-granddaughter, the, the andirons, and the bisque figurine on the mantel. This is the fireplace fender, andirons, and fire utensils shown in the interior view of 1711 Douglas Street, Omaha, and inherited by Dorothy Sloman Belding, Edward Rosewater's great-granddaughter. The bisque figurine on the mantelpiece was also shown in that house. This shows the dining room at 1711 Douglas Street. This is another interior shot of 1711 Douglas Street, Omaha, showing the portrait of General Grant, which was displayed on the front of the B building when General Grant visited Omaha. This looks like fun and games at 1711 Douglas Street, with Leah Rosewater looking very tired. She's asleep. She's awake right there. Adelina Patti, a famous soprano and supposedly a schoolmate of Leah's, came to Omaha in the winter of 1887. The le this letter, written on February the 25th, 1887, when Stella was 20, describes a visit by Patti to the Rosewater House and gives a small insight into their hectic life. My dear folks, Today has been a very eventful day in the Rosewater Mansion. The divine goddess of song, Madame Patty, took lunch here this noon. Oh, but she is lovely, so gracious and so easy to get acquainted with. In the first place, her arrival has long been expected. Pa met them at the depot, Wednesday at 6 p.m. Mr. Nicol Nicolini, Patty's husband, accompanied him home and invited Pa and Ma to dine with him in the evening, a birthday banquet in his, Mr. Nicolini's, honor, which was held on their private railroad car. Of course they accepted and just had an elegant time. Yesterday the concert came off and the whole town seemed to be present. The immense hall was packed. We had very good seats and the concert was grand, of course gentlemen in full dress, and ladies without their bonnets. Ardette was the leader, Patty Scalci, who was a melodious contralto, Galassi, Guillet, and Navarro, the artists. The first part was regular concert, the last parts of Semiramide Sam in costume. You should have seen her jewels, pearls and diamonds as large as pi pigeon eggs, and so many of them. Her crown alone was worth half a million, and then she says she left her best things in New York. But today, she is lovelier off the stage than on. She gave Ma a little souvenir pin, which she has worn herself. It is a sort of little battle axe, consisting of four rubies and 27 diamonds. The lunch was the most enjoyable thing at which I have ever been present, company considered. The dining room table looked lovely chandelier and table decorated with smilax, uh, boutonnieres for the gentlemen and corsage bouquets for the ladies. There were eight plates laid, Patty Nicolini, Miss Neely Stevens, in the parenthesis, my music teacher, a very prominent pianist, Andrew and Francis Rosewater, Pa, Ma, and I. Here is the menu. We had a club waiter and things went off beautifully smooth. Raw oysters, soup, mutton chops with French peas and mashed potatoes, chicken salad, smoked tongue and turkey with jellies, salted almonds, ices and cakes, fruit, cafe noir. Claret was served, but the madame drinks nothing but whiskey and water. Nicolini manage, manages to make up for that, though. Deary, in quotes, watches every mouthful that the sweet songstress takes. She must have the tenderest chop 
and the best piece of turkey, and she must not eat sweets or drink coffee. The old chap has made it a special study, I suppose. He knows which side his bread is buttered. They were very talkative and told a good many stories out of school. She dresses very plainly off the stage, no, no jewelry to speak of. She always wears a narrow gold bracelet with some sacred Hebrew letters on the bangle. I am not scholar enough to know what they are. And though she speaks English without the faintest foreign accent, her French and German are perfect, and she knows more Jewish phrases than I do. She gave us all a very cordial invitation to visit her at Craigino's castle. I hope I may have the pleasure, but alas, no more passes after April 1st, they say. Miss Stevens had a great time getting here. She was in Omaha Wednesday, but as I did not know until evening just when Patty would be here, we were obliged to telegraph her invitation to Nebraska City. Now that measly town might as well be out of the world for all the railroad facilities it offers. At 9.30 p.m. she crossed the Missouri on the ice in a wagon. She was directed to a house where she would be very comfortable, but perfectly safe. The folks were abed, but the man led her through his bedchamber into another room and asked her if she objected to sleeping in the same apartment with, quote, our boy, unquote. Now this, quote, boy, unquote, looked pretty long, stretched out on a cot, but she had just concluded to stay when the woman came and said she would move the boy, who proved to be a full-grown man with a beard. He was a cripple or an imbecile or something. They waked her at half past three, and she climbed into the car, railroad car, which had been switched right in front of the door. She found herself in the only compartment, the only passenger, with a pass too, and with the conductor and engineer. But she reached here in time to see Patty, and was satisfied. There were a great many enthusiasts who begged to be allowed to come and just shake hands, but we refused. Patty did not care to meet anybody, and if we had issued invitations for a reception, we should have been obliged to invite Tom, Dick, and Harry, or else slight some of our friends. So we just had a lovely time all to ourselves. Mrs. Kahn, old, fell on the ice a, month, a week ago and has the blackest eye and the reddest nose I ever saw. She felt terrible about it. Mrs. Jake Wiles' baby has the measles. We have seen her several times. Otherwise, I think there is no news. Ma is tired out and snoozing on the lounge. I have written enough to excuse her for this time. I counted up today that in the six weeks that our house has been furnished, we have entertained the following persons. The coffee party, 12 with two extra. The editorial staff, 14. The doctor every other Sunday. Mrs. Howe at least once a week. Mrs. Kimball and Mrs. Haney, six members of the legislature, a Mr. Mosier of Lincoln, Mr. and Mrs. Max Myers, and a Mr. Mayer, Mr. Kilpatrick of Cleveland, Mr. and Mrs. Williams, Mrs. Koenig and her boys several times, and the Patty lunch today. What do you think of that? We are just a trifle weary of seeing Pa come home, quote, with a man, unquote, with love, Stella. This is an invitation to a celebration of the 25th anniversary of the founding of the Omaha Bee, Friday, June 19th, 1896. The pictures are of Edward Rosewater, dated 1871 and 1896. Edward Rosewater was a delegate to the Sixth Universal Postal Congress held in Rome in April 1906. He brought along Stella Rosewater File, his daughter, Anna File, and Nellie. They left New York March 15, 1906, on a French steamship called the Murray. They encountered a five-day ocean storm. Everyone was seasick. They landed in Le Havre and spent some time in an elegant hotel in Paris then on to Nice, then Genoa, Pisa, and then to Rome by train. They spent a month in Rome at the Bristol Hotel, quote, very swank. 
This is a picture of the opening session of the Universal Postal Congress in Rome, April 1906. The King and Queen of Italy are in attendance. This is a closer view of the King and Queen of Italy in attendance at the opening session of the Postal Congress. This is one of the formal banquets at the Postal Congress in Rome. of the sessions of, at the Postal Congress in Rome in 1906. This shows Edward Rosewater in the front row among the delegates to the Postal Congress in Rome. Some of the formally dressed delegates to the Postal Congress exiting. Anna and Nellie were forbidden to venture out alone, but sometimes did. They, presumably with Stella, walked to the shopping district, quote, down a smelly street, unquote, near the Spanish steps. Anna's 13th birthday was celebrated in Rome. Her grandfather gave her a string of coral beads. After Rome came Florence and Milan and Venice, a hotel by the Grand Canal, then on to Vienna, Cologne, and Dresden. Back home on the Provence, a new and lovely friendship. 1906 was a very busy year for Edward Rosewater. Besides attending the Postal Congress, he was also running for United States Senator. Edward Rosewater died very suddenly in his office at the Omaha Bee in early September 1906. These There were many ideas put forth for lasting memorials to Edward Rosewater. It was finally decided that because of Edward Rosewater's interest in education, a school would be built and dedicated to him. The dedication ceremony was Saturday, June 3rd, 1911. Seventy-four years later, the Rosewater School was recycled into 32 apartments, so it still stands in Omaha. After Edward's death, Leah went to live with her daughter and son-in-law, Stella and Nahum File, on 36th Street in Omaha. This picture shows her with her granddaughter, Josephine Newman, who was born in May of 1912, so, and she must have been about two years old at this time. Leah died in July of 1914, shortly after breaking her hip. The Omaha Bee was founded in 1871 by Edward Rosewater. The pictures show seven buildings successively inhabited by the Omaha Bee. What Who's Who says, Rosewater, Edward, founder and editor since 1871, Omaha Bee, born Bukoban, a small village of Bohemia, 1841. Educated at village school and high school at Prague until 13 years old came to the United States in 1854, telegraph operator at 17, in U.S. Military Telegraph Corps, 1861 to 63, went to Omaha, 1863, as manager Pacific Telegraph, member of Nebraska Legislature, 1871, member Republican National Committee, 1892, Member Advisory Board National Committee, 1896, 1900, 1904. Received many votes on numerous ballots in Nebraska Legislature, 1901, for U.S. Senator. Member U.S. Mint Commission, 1897. Representative of U.S. and Vice President, Universal Postal Congress, Washington, 1897. Also again at Rome, 1906 one of original promoters of Trans-Mississippi Exposition, Omaha, 1898, member of its executive committee in charge of publicity and promotion, delegate and member committee on resolutions, American Conference International Arbitration, Washington, 1904, 
Member Executive Committee, National Civic Federation. Edward Rosewater was one of the original promoters of the Trans-Mississippi Exposition, Omaha, 1898, a member of its Executive Committee in charge of publicity and promotion. These are some views of the Trans-Mississippi Exposition in Omaha in 1898. This ends the chapter of Leah Coleman and Edward Rosewater, true pioneers in Omaha, whose influence lives on in their descendants. All right, tomorrow. Jill? We'll be right back to wrap things up after this.
The Chevy trucks are rolling in. The Chevy savings are rolling out during the fall truck rollout at your Chevy Geo Network dealer. Buy Northeast Ohio's number one compact pickup Chevy S10. Get a thousand cash back. And if you're a first time buyer, a $600 down payment bonus for a total savings of $1,600. Buy an 89.